Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we are dealing with a sick economy. And this sick economy has to be fixed by us because that is the onus which is on us. We all know that our resource envelope is not as fat as we wanted it to be. Like uh, other members said, <coughs> we should cut our coat according to our size. Our debt status at the moment is here at our neck. That's why you look at the debt service. It's huge. It's taking a good chunk of our money. Therefore, how do we solve that? These differences are between our resource and our expenditure. This deficit, we can control it. But we have to be honest to ourselves if we want to control it. This is not about any government. This is about our country, the Gambia. Other countries have done it, and we can do it with sacrifice. If you look at our budget from the GLF, 85% is all on recurrent, only 15% development. We cannot develop like that. We cannot develop like that. Very few people have opportunities to occupy places like what we are occupying today. As members of parliament, as members of cabinet, as directors, very few people compared to the larger number of people in the country. Therefore, the solution should be provided by us. And in providing the solutions, we must sacrifice. The 2023 budget has little for development. Our incomes need to be watched. We have salary increments almost year in, year out. I think we should have an embargo on that if we want to make any meaningful development in this country. But if any budget session, <coughs> we want allowances to go up, we want salaries to go up, then there will be nothing for development. That means we will just be filling our pockets from taxpayers' money. And there cannot be any development. Because there is no resources. Honorable Speaker, during our retreat, <coughs> Our expert gave us one example on the Minister of Basic Education, that 96% of their money goes to their personal emoluments, only four to develop the education sector of this country. We cannot. Education will go back, agriculture will go back, because these two are related. You are educated, you work and have productive produces. You don't have the knowledge, you cannot work, you cannot increase your income. So if our education goes down, agriculture will go down. Those who speak for agriculture, you must be in line with those who speak for education if you want agriculture to go. But if 96% of that budget goes to only allowances and salaries, then the education also is not going to be developed, Honorable Speaker. This goes across the sectors, all the sectors. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we budgeted for three new embassies. This is all. We need to look at our expenditures. If we cannot control our expenditures, we will not develop because any money the state have, we want to spend it on salaries and allowances. Foreign ministry alone in this 2023 budget 
has more than a billion dollars budget. You add three new embassies to that. <laughs> My friend, where are we heading to? For some years here, we were calling for downsizing our foreign embassies. This is a small country. We cannot be in every country in the world. Even the developed nations, they don't have their embassies. We have a lot of ambassadors sitting in Dakar, taking care of more than four, five, six countries. German is under the embassy, German embassy in Brussels. It just takes the ambassador a few hours to drive to go to Germany. Why do we need to open another embassy there? Just to increase our expenditure. We increase our expenditure, we do not have that envelope, resource envelope. So we'll just be going poor and poor and poor. We will never progress. Because we are spending too much and we are giving too little. And we don't, we don't care how we spend. This is what we need to watch. Honorable Speaker, we need to maintain the downsizing of the foreign embassies in the world. One ambassador can take care of five countries. It does not hold water to say that if you don't have an embassy in a particular country, you cannot get money from them. That does not hold water. German has been supplying I mean, helping us for several years. Not a single ambassador there. So it does not hold water. It doesn't work like that. We are developing. If we want to reach where developed countries are, we must watch our expenditures. And watching our expenditures is we need to downsize these embassies. Honorable Speaker, salaries and allowances are on the increase all the time. It's another line of expenditure. We must watch it. The size of cabinet has increased to 21. It's also a good expenditure. This small country, small economy. And we say we want to develop, increasing our expenditure, no resources at all. All our money we take it from people's tax. And we don't care how we spend it. The size of this embassy should be downsized. The size of the cabinet has to be downsized. This is how we will go. We need to watch our salaries. We need to watch our allowances. Not year in, year out. Very well, the size of the parliament can be reduced. And what is wrong with that? Nothing, absolutely. <laughs> All nominated members out. What is wrong with that? We need to downsize it. If we take the nominated members out, we are left only 53 constituencies. It's an unnecessary expenditure. You are very right, uh, nominated member, Deputy Speaker. Thank you for reminding me. Mr. Speaker, the office of the National Assembly. You look at the salary attached to the office of the Speaker. You look at members, you look at allowances in our budget. No, it's not reasonable. It's not reasonable if you want to make progress. If there are increments this year, we should leave it like that for two, three, five years before we get another increment. That way we can progress. But if we are increasing distance year in, year out, no, we will not progress. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, what is happening now is that the chunk of the taxpayers' money is going into the pockets of very few people for their own betterment. And the larger members of this country, population of the country, are neglected. Are neglected. This is a hard fact. And if you want to progress, we have to look at that. We cannot continue like this if we want to progress. Mr. Speaker, we should not put too much burden on the sick economy. Like I said at the beginning, we have a sick economy. We are the people to fix it. And if we add more and more burden on it, it will die. And the way we are going, that's where we are going to. Every little resources is put into people's pocket as salaries, as allowances. It cannot be every year. 
if you are serious and serious about the development of this country. And it is the responsibility of government to take a lead. We are part and parcel of the government. So it's, it's, the onus is on all of us. We are the authorities that will approve these proposals. If you approve it as it is, then we are part of the problem. We are not part of the solution. We need to watch when you go to the community of supply, we need to take a look, very, be very careful, look at all these things, and make savings as much as possible. 